So you can see here, it is shown that the inline action sheet is the recommended, but now we are going to work with the inline one. So let's get started with this. And for doing this up, I'm going to create a new project. So let's get started with Ionic Start and I'll just hit no for the creation wizard. Okay, this thing keeps on changing. You need to remember that. I'll select Angular and I'll give a project name. Let's say inline component. All right, let me hit enter and I'll select a blank template. Now these are the two options which are new here, which I think I have shown you at the very beginning in section four or five. So let's go for ng module right now, or we can in fact select the standalone one too. Let's go for standalone. You haven't seen yet how the standalone actually works. So let's go with that. So mostly the difference between ng modules and standalone is that there is no module files in standalone project, which you are just going to see after we create it. All right. Now it is asking me for creating a new account. I'll hit no and go ahead with this. So the project is created. Let's get inside the project folder by using this command. I'll simply type here code space dot and hit enter. So this will open the project in Visual Studio Code. Now in Visual Studio Code, this project is running. Let me just open the terminal. If you just look at the structure, file structure of it, you will see some difference, not here exactly within the app folder. Now you just check here, there is no module file. Earlier we had app.module.ts file, which we don't have right now. Instead of that, everything is done in the main.ts file. Bootstrap application, the providers are being passed. And if you want to import something, you can pass it here directly, okay? So that is being used, which I'm going to explain you at the end of this course, at the end part, basically, how to work with the standalone one. So this is the major difference. And the most important one is all the components you can make it standalone. You don't need to use ng module anymore. Without that, you can definitely go ahead to work with. But yes, if you want, you can include the ng module or the module files into this standalone project also and work with that. That is also shown in the end part of the course. Okay. Now, without jumping into more advanced thing about this stuff, we are just going to work with the functionality of ion action sheet. So I'm into the home page just like the earlier one. Now in the home page TypeScript, you will see two extra things. One is the standalone one, which is showing that this particular home page is a standalone one. That means it does not require any module file and it is mostly used for lazy loading stuff. Okay. And all the imports are passed directly here. You can pass exports or whatever you were using in the ng module or the module file, you can directly pass it here instead of creating that. So that is the benefit of using the standalone one and it reduces the number of files along with the size of the application too and makes the application run little faster than the earlier one. Okay. That is the benefit of it. Now we are going to implement some stuff. Let me clear the SCSS and in the HTML one, I'm going to clear the stuff. No full screen is required. Even no translucent one is required and I'm going to call it inline components. All right. Now let's run this project using ionic surf command and this is running into our browser. That's great. Now let's implement this action sheet one. So in the inline action sheet, what is there? If you click on it, this is coming up. This is what is action sheet is all about. Now, in order to implement that in the HTML, you simply need to pass this action sheet one. Let's copy this whole stuff and paste it here in the content one. Okay. In this manner, let me align it properly so that you can understand what exactly is being done here. Don't worry. I'm going to explain you what it's being done. So basically what is happening in the action sheet, there is a property called trigger in which whatever value you are passing, you need to pass the same value to the ID of that particular button or div or anything you are using. If you do that, which means that if you click on that button or div or anything else, then this will get triggered. That's what it means. Now in the TypeScript one, what is being given? Let's have that too. So this is the functionality of the action sheet button that is being passed. Let's copy that and paste it into our TypeScript file before the constructor. So let's do it here. All right. Once that is done, the error is gone. And let's check the output now, what it shows. So there is a button. If I click on that, you can just see the action sheet is showing here. So this is how you can work around with this particular stuff. Okay. You can pass the buttons dynamically and work with it. Now the headers is being given as actions. That is basically this particular one and the other stuff, the button design is being given here. All right. You can have an handler also with which you can definitely work 
what action needs to be taken. Let's check out the documentation a bit more to understand what all things can we do. So there is another property called is open. Say like you don't want to open this particular action sheet on click of this button and you want to like trigger it from the TypeScript one. Okay, directly instead of using this up. So in that case, what you can do is let me just comment it and copy this stuff and paste it once again. Now what am I going to do instead of trigger, I'm going to use a property called is open. Now is open, I'll pass a property or if I'll pass a property here, let's say is action sheet, any name I'm just passing open. So I need to create that and I need to make it by giving square brackets in order to make it a variable because this is not a string that I'm passing. All right. And in order to work with it, I need to pass it here, which will be a Boolean value that I'm going to set it to false initially so that it will not trigger the action sheet at the very beginning. If I set it to true, let me just show you the output. Right now we don't have anything. If I set it to true here, you will see that this will pop up initially at the very beginning, which didn't happen actually. Why is that so? So directly it is not coming up. Let me work with the ng on init so implements on init and I can pass here ng on init let's try to pass it here this dot is action sheet open will be set to true here okay and let me make it false so that the initial value is false all right now let's check it out still nothing is happening here so we have done the same stuff only we have set it to false initially and we are passing it in on init but instead of that, it is saying that you should use some functionality to work with it. All right, we will try that also because it, it might not be triggering in ng on any directly. So let's do something else. Let's work with the button again because again, without triggering something, it will not work directly. So what am I going to do? Well, I'll just have this thing and instead of ID, I'm going to pass a click event here in which or open action sheet function all right that is what i'm going to use and i'm going to pass it in the typescript one so this is my function within which i'm going to set the value as true all right once that is done let's check it out now whether it shows up something or not again this is showing up so you need to trigger something from the html whether there is a function or anything then only it's going to work directly using the ng on in it will not help us to open the action sheet okay that is what they have done. Now this is also seen apart from that, you can work with all the things which is shown here. This is how you can work with the component. I think I have already shown you earlier how to work with the component one. Now collecting role information on dismiss. So how you can do that part when you're working with the HTML one, right? When you're passing it in this particular manner, in that case, you can use this particular event did dismiss and work with that. You can in, in fact pass subheaders also. And if you want to just see what are the properties and methods you can pass? Simply go to this particular properties. You will see what all properties you can pass like button CSS class you can pass, enter animation. A lot of things are there, okay, which you can work with. And in the methods one, you will see what all methods you can apply there. So mostly the methods are applied. Let me just show you in this particular manner, uh, which I'm going to give just now. Let me paste it. So this is how we pass a method with curve brackets, okay? Because it is going to throw something in the output and it is this square bracket will is shown that it is going to accept some value. So it is like an input. This is like an output value. That's how simple it can be. Okay. Now the result set result and there you will, you will get the value. All right. Now this is showing an error. If you don't pass any type because in our tsconfig.json file here you can see strict to true is being set. If you set it to false then this error will go away in the where it is in the TypeScript one. You can see this is gone but if you set it to true that means it is going to check it strictly so it is not able to define means it is not able to declare what it is actually so if you pass as any also still the error will go away okay so i've just kept it as true and passing that up now it's fine all right so let's log the value of it what exactly we are getting in the value on dismiss of it let's check it out so if i get back and if i click here now if i click on delete i'm getting an event right there is a value in the detail one you're getting data where action is delete that's what it's being passed when you click on delete right that is what we have done in our typescript one this is what is being passed in the data so whatever you pass in the data that will be triggered there all right 
simple to understand now in the action sheet let's look at some other things also we have seen the button how to work with it and you can also look into the styling of it so in the styling what comes up let's check it out so this kind of a design you can work with by going to the global CSS or SCSS which we have and passing this particular stuff there but instead of doing this in this particular manner I'm going to use the custom CSS properties for this IN action sheet in which I'm going to get the same design but I'm going to pass in this particular manner okay and if you want to learn about it you can simply go to the custom CSS properties and look into the properties what you can pass this is the same property which you normally use in a CSS say like background one background backdrop opacity or some others are related to the to this particular component with the help of this dash dash you can understand that this is the custom properties that are being only passed to this particular component that is how they are differentiating from the normal CSS and the custom CSS all right let's get back to this particular one and scroll down so I was showing you this particular stuff if I implement this thing into our one and for which I need to like go to I think home page one will also work in the SCSS if I give it so I'm here my custom class is the class that is being passed in the HTML I think we need to pass a class here you can name any means you can pass any name here if I want to change definitely I can do it but let's pass the same class only and see whether it works or not without passing it in the global one so this is working right so you do need to pass in the global one in directly passing it here also it will work in a similar manner okay so this is working for us same you can just look into the other stuff which you need to work with here okay so this is how you need to work with the action sheet using the inline one so as you can see here this is an example of ion accordion how it looks like in ios mode and this is for the android one okay so this is what we are going to implement where you can have some heading and within that the content okay this is how it is working so this is the html part with the help of which you can execute the same stuff okay now you can even toggle the accordion with the help of a button also say like i'm opening it up and i'll close it and work with it in this particular manner all right now how it is being done well this button will toggle the second accordion how it is being done in the TypeScript one let's check it out so in the TypeScript one it is using the view child in order to get the reference of that particular accordion group and within that it is going to look into the value of second which is being passed to this particular accordion as the value you can see the value second is being passed and this is the ion item group in within which each accordion ion accordion is being passed so one accordion two accordions then the third accordion each of them is given a value that is being getting triggered here with the help of which it is doing the stuff okay so if there is a second value then it is going to make it undefined otherwise it is going to have the value second so in this case like right now it is not opened up so if you click on it it is going to open the stuff because it is going to execute the else condition all right and if not then it's going to make it undefined in this particular manner okay so this is what is being done don't worry we are going to execute it up but let me just first show you how exactly this is working listen for state change in it so how you can listen to that there is an ion change event that is getting triggered here in which you can listen to this particular event where is this function what is the function name i just forgot okay action group change which is this particular one so it is being passed as a variable here don't need to worry we can you can directly skip this part along with that this part too and make it a function here all right if you want to but otherwise you can execute in this particular manner also now this is how we listen to an event here within which if there is no event it's going to return but if there is some value then it is going to look into that now this listen out is an element ref to this listen out which is being passed to this particular p tag okay so it will listen to this particular p tag if the p tag is not available then it's going to return if it is available then it's going to filter the values whatever it's going to get from the event and will append something in the inner text one in this particular manner in which this is a stringify format okay 
within which this select value is being passed. This is a condition that is being passed. Okay. Now let's check it out. What it shows. If I just click on it, you can see this is the one that is coming up in the P tag. Then this is how it's being done there. All right. So it is trying to place this value or not trying exactly. It has already placed the value within the P tag. That is how it's being done here. So you can simply check the examples and understand mostly. Now multiple accordions. So you can open multiple accordion at the same time. That is being done with the help of passing more than one value and setting multiple to true. That is how it needs to be done. Uh, let me just scroll a little bit bottom because I I'm sure you have understood this particular part. It's pretty easy because within the ion accordion, we are just passing the ion item, which I've already explained you now in the ion item. We are just passing a label here. Now the slot is given as header and a color is being passed. You can change the color if you want to. All right. You can disable the accordion as per your requirement and you can also make it read only. It might be showing up somewhere. All the accordions are disabled and read only is also available where you can make someone read only. Don't worry. This is the title that is being given, but in order to make it read only, you simply need to pass read only to true to that particular accordion. Or if you want me want to make all of them read only, then you can simply pass it to the accordion group. Well, I think it must have been done. Yes, it is done here. Similarly for disable also, you can simply pass it to the group one, or if you want to make single single, then you can simply pass it to the ion accordion one in this particular manner. All right. It's very easy to understand all these things if you just give it a shot. All right. Now, if you want to style it a bit, let me click here. This is expansion style. Okay. If you make expand to insert is given a border radius. Okay. On MD mode, the entire will shift down when it is opened. Let's check it out. If I click here. Okay. Nice. This is looking nice actually. That's great. So you can style in that particular manner, but I'm going to implement the one that is being shown mostly, I think here. So in this accordion, you won't find any change as of now, but if I just click on it, you can see the design is changed, right? So I want to implement this particular design into our code. That is why I was just waiting till we reach this end. All right. So now we are going to implement it up. And if you haven't seen the earlier ones, definitely you can just check these things out for the advanced expansion styles where you can pass all these class names to work with. One of the example is being shown here. Now we are going to implement the other examples which we have seen here and how we can do that with the help of this particular one. So I'm going to blindly pass this whole styling into our code for which in the home SCSS, I'm going to paste it. Okay. In which you can see the ion accordion. I'm working directly with the margin here. Then ion accordion dot accordion expanding, which is shown in this particular one where you can pass this for classes. Okay. So one, then two is the expanded one, which is already shown here, which will fully expand the accordion. Okay. Where a width is being passed means it is changing the width and a margin is being given. Then it is working with the collapsing and collapsed one. It is just checking it out and making the background to be light color and the color of the text to be light contrast. You can just check it on the variables.scss for what color is being passed here, which is available in the theme folder. So light color is available in this particular one. This is a light color and the contrast color is the black color one. Okay. Then in the iron accordion, accordion expanding and accordion expanded background color is changed to primary. That is why we see that when it is expanding and expanded and the color of it is changed to primary contrast. Now the interesting thing here is that within the iron item, the slot needs to be headed. That so it is only changing on the header part. Nowhere else. Remember that. That is why the slot is of header is being passed. Now let's implement that and see whether it works for us or not. So I'm going to go to the HTML and copy this whole stuff here. Okay. Copy and we'll paste it directly here. All right. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to implement all this functionality within this particular one itself. How am I going to do that? Let me just show you. So this particular button, let me just cut it from here. All right. And the first header will be action sheet. That's what I'm going to name it. Then within the iron label, I'm going to pass 
not within the iron label actually within the div here with where the first content is being passed i'm going to pass a button here all right let's check it out now whether it works or not so i'll just go to the ionic app and this is the action sheet if i just click on it you can see the design has changed if i click on this open one this is working so this is what we are going to implement in our case now this is looking really lovely right okay now on the click event basically on the ion change event i think we have triggered the click event one right so when i'm clicking on it i'll get let me make it event this will be event dot detail detail dot value okay let's check it once again if i click on it and click anywhere outside again this is showing undefined let me remove this value and see what exactly we need to pass let's check it quickly so we have detail okay not the value we have the data and role so we can simply look for event dot detail if you want to fine dot our priority right now so this is working in our ion accordion this is how you can work with the other stuff also i hope you have understood the scss because it's quite simple to work with it's already been given you just need to understand you are working only with the header part if you want to work with the div part definitely you can pass it within this particular one and design that div too as per your requirement hope it's clear now let's check anything else is left out here or not so i'll just scroll down you can even change the icons also so this is this is the icons that you can pass instead of the normal one okay and in the android one this is going to look in this particular manner okay so if you click on it again the same stuff will come up but i don't want to pass it in order to change that you simply need to pass what you just need to pass toggle icon one and toggle icon slot start or end if i just pass it end it will show it this particular stuff towards the end part based on your direction which is the default one is left to right okay now the theming one you can in fact change the color of it by passing color to each and every one here a different color is being designed if you just check it on the global.scss you will see that in the root one rose color is being defined so you can just create a new color if you want to or you can pass the existing one also in your html directly passing the color rose instead of color rose let's let me just show you how you can pass it so for this action sheet one let me pass a color of not primary let me pass secondary color which we have in our variables.scss and if i it is not changing here have i passed it somewhere else all right to the ion item is being passed okay i am passing it in the ion accordion let me cut it from here to the ion item if i pass it let's check it out now you can see the color of it has changed so in this manner you can change the color of each and every accordion ion item hope it's clear now let's get back and look into the other stuff so you can in fact pass animation also you can just set it to false if you don't want the animation by default i think animations are enabled yes it is written here okay it is written here by default it is enabled fine so keyboard navigation also you can work with just need to look when focus is on the accordion header the accordion will collapse let's check it out if i just go here and click on the keyboard button well i don't think so it's going to work if i make it responsive okay this is just navigating but nothing is happening here in order to open it up what i need to do space or enter all right if i hit space you can see this is opening up okay now let's go to the mobile view again reload it if i hit the space bar right now well this will okay this is working with the space bar but in order to hover doesn't work so i have to click on it then i can work with the keyboard one if needed again from the up button and down button down arrow and up arrow i can like just go through the different different accordions so this is working with the keyboard one also that's fine anything else we need to check well animations well you can just pass it whatever you want to do you can do it and these are the properties which you can work with all right so you can just look into the stuff as per your requirement so we have successfully checked the ion accordion in fact ion accordion group also we have checked all the things which because it is implemented directly out there now mode also you can set for ios and android but it will be static for both the platforms i don't want that i want ios mode for ios one and md mode for the android one that's fine
So I think you have already seen the alert controller, how to work with that. This time we will see how to work with the alert controller or the ion alert within the HTML itself. So this is how we can do same like the ion action sheet. So there is hardly any difference. You have understood the trigger and is open one. You have the same stuff here also. Okay. So I'm not going to explain you this trigger and is open stuff. Or if you just want to understand and simply understand in this particular manner, the whatever value you are passing it in the trigger one, you need to pass the same value in the ID one of a button or anything else, say like a P tag or even a div or even ion tag, text, anything. Okay. Just you need to pass the ID value there. It has to be the same value. Then if you click on that particular stuff, it's going to open this alert here, just like the one we can see here. Okay. So this is how it can be done. And if you don't want to use trigger, then you can use is open value in which you need to set a Boolean value here. If it is true, then only it's going to show up. That's how you can like work with it. And you can pass a click event from the button or anywhere else means it has to be triggered from the HTML only whether through a click event or some other functionality. And then you can set that value as true, then this particular stuff will show up. Okay. And this is an example of it, how it needs to be done. Simple example, the way I have explained this button again, this set it to true and here a boolean value is being used whose value is changed. That's it. Once the value is changed as because this is passed as true here, you will simply see this is opening up in this particular manner. Okay. Pretty simple. You can work with the controller also the alert controller one directly into the TypeScript one, just like the way I have shown you in this particular manner. All right. And the it will work in the similar manner. I think I have shown you. If not, then you will look into this in, in the coming section where we are going to work with the food delivery application. So now the buttons one, what all buttons we can pass. If I just click here, you can see cancel and OK button. Two buttons are being passed in this manner here. Alert buttons where the TypeScript file holds the public property of alert buttons in which these two buttons one is the cancel one whose role is cancel basically it will get cancel and this is a handler function where you can pass some functionality when it is getting when you click on it similarly for the okay also it is a having a role of confirmation and this is a handler for that also and once you dismiss that it will look for that particular role value because in the role we have passed a value and in the HTML you are looking for an event called did dismiss. So this event is very important. Now let's try to implement this particular whole stuff. I'll just copy it and we'll execute that into our second one. Let me change it to alert. Okay. And within this, instead of the second content, I'm going to pass this whole stuff here. All right. Let me align it properly. Now let's get rid of the errors one by one. And for doing that up, let's check it out what exactly we need to do in the TypeScript one. At first, we need to define these two properties into our TypeScript one. Let's do that. So I'm going to initialize it here in this manner. Once that is done, the third thing is to pass this alert button. Okay. You can pass the value in ng on in it also, but let's define it here so that it can be used directly. All right. So this is also defined. Now all the errors will go away. You can see, right? Let's check the output now. So I'll go to the ionic application and this is the alert one. Let's check it out. If you click on it, it is going to show you the alert. And if you want, you can change the functionality, whatever you are passing it here in the buttons one. So in the alert button, you have two buttons and what is there? You just have the header here. Okay. Along with that, you can pass some other fields also say like input and other stuff. Let's check it out. I think after the buttons, you have the input one. If you want, definitely you can use this particular stuff also. And how to do that? Well, you simply need to pass inputs also. Okay. Let me just do that. I'll just copy and paste it here after the buttons one. And I'm sure you have understood the did dismiss one. So why we didn't need to create this particular function because it was already available for the action sheet and it is being used in a similar manner. All right. So I'm going to use the same functionality for both of those. Okay. Now for the inputs one, let's check it out what we need to do in our TypeScript one. I just need to copy this particular one in this manner. All right. Once that is done in the alert button, only OK is given be given, but I will not have that. In fact, I will have the cancel one also, just like the way we have earlier. So I'm not going to change that. Instead, I'm just going to create this particular input one. All right. Once that is done, error is gone. Now let's check it out how it looks like this time. 
for the alert one if i click on it this is what is coming up and you can simply have passed the values here okay now if i hit the cancel button let's see what happens here i get the data in which the value is being passed as 0 1 2 3 and let's check the our functionality in the alert buttons when you're canceling it up the handle message handler message is cancel alert cancelled all right but we're not passing any data here right since we are passing the input so it is getting the value for each one of those and it is since we are not passing any value there let's try it okay if i click on it and i pass a value here six and if i click on okay now I should get a value for the zeroth position. Yes, you see there is a value that is coming up. So this is how it works. I hope you have understood. Now I'm simply going to change the color of alert also. Let me change the iron item color to be, let's say tertiary. Let's see what's the color for tertiary. And this is the one that is coming up. So this is how you can change the color of each and everyone. So you have seen the alert one also, and I hope I have covered up each and everything. There are a lot of other things also like the radio button, which you can just work with it. Okay. And some other customization also, you can simply check accessibilities. Interfaces is also there. Well, basically you can pass this particular stuff directly into an alert button. What all things you can pass. And in the input one, you can pass all these properties. You can simply check it out. And in the alert options also, you can pass this particular stuff. That is what is being given and after that you have the properties what all things you can work with in the property fields which you need to pass in the html one in this particular positions okay so hope that is also clear to you right you can have work with the css properties also css classes actually which you can pass it here and finally i think everything is being shown nothing else is left you can simply go through the documentation in order to understand a little bit more about it these are the events which can be triggered So what is iron breadcrumbs? Basically, it's going to look in this particular manner. And if you click on it, it will redirect to some places which you can work with. Okay, you can give an href here. And this is how it can work. Basically, when you have a website view, this comes into very handy at the top. So this is how the structure will be or the tag definition will be. Within the breadcrumbs, you can pass each and every breadcrumb and work with it. And if you want to pass an icon here, you can simply do it in this particular manner. You just need to have an icon along with the breadcrumb name and it will show up. Okay, so that's the only thing. And in fact, custom separator is also there. So separator, you can simply modify that because right now you have seen this arrow marks and in the Android one, it's going to be a slash one. So you can just customize that also. How you can do that? You can pass an icon after the name and it will show up directly there. In fact, for MD also, it is showing up. That's great. Just by doing this stuff, it's going to work as expected. But you just need to pass slot to be separated. That's the only thing you need to pass. Otherwise, in the earlier one, slot and was given for the icon where it needs to be placed. So and and start can be given for the icon one, but slot separator, you need to pass in order to have this or change it. Okay. Then what else you can do? Max items. Okay. You can show this type of a thing also. How you can do that? Max items should be okay. Four. That's a value that is being given. And here you have more than four items. So first and last is shown and others are kept within this particular one. If you click on it, well, this is not showing up the result because nothing is being done here items before and after collapse so after collapsing how it shows before collapse this is showing in this manner after collapsing it's going to show in this particular manner but how that is being done before collapse so max items twos items before collapse you can just pass two items and after before collapse zero items before collapse you can pass zero also that is how it's going to look when you pass zero and when you pass two what will happen if after collapse you pass items after collapse two that means after the collapse two items will be passed this is the one and before two after two will look like this okay so basically this click event won't work for anything you just need to pass or you can change the values dynamically also if you want to so that is being shown here fine so collapse indicator click if you click on it now let's see you will see all the stuff this is what i wanted and this can be done using this particular event called iron collapsed click by doing this you will have a functionality here in which you have to define the max breadcrumbs to be undefined which is the value that is being passed in this max items one so like the way i told you we have to make it dynamic that's what they have done 
and it is working. Now you can present the popover also on click. On click, which one you need, you can simply click on that, I mean select that up and it's going to show. Right now it is just showing the popover one and nothing else is being done here. This popover is shown with the help of the same stuff only when the event is getting triggered in the function one, it is calling the popover event and it is setting the popover to be true, which is being passed in this particular manner. This is the popover one. All right, so you have not seen the popover as of now. I'm going to show you that also how you can do the inline one, then you will understand this. Up. So now what is the next thing? The theming one also you can apply in which you can change the color to be primary, which is being done here. What else you can do? Custom CSS properties can also be applied like the color you can change. Those who are active, you can change the color of that. And on hover, you can simply change the color like the way it is being done here. You can just see on hover the color is changing and the one that is active is having a different color. The one that are not active is having different color. Okay, that is what it's being shown here. By default, the last one is the active one. All right, so these are the properties and what you can apply and methods. There are no methods only an event called ion collapse click is shown here. So we have understood or we have seen the whole documentation. Now let's implement that up. How we are going to implement it? Let me just show you at the very top, I'm going to have something. Let's work on that. But before starting with that, I want to do something. Let me just minimize it. Now it's fine. Now this role message, I have not implemented it anywhere. In fact, I can do it here when the result is set for the alert one. I'll just paste some code. So this dot role message, I'm going to set it to this event dot detail dot role value. Now this value will show up here. And in fact, this ion, okay, this ion action sheet, I'll cut it from here and let me have it within the accordion one for action sheet okay in this manner and align it properly so that we can identify okay which one is what and let me separate each one of those in fact you can change the value also i have already explained that so i've separated both the accordion let's check it out once okay this should work yes it is working and this should also work dismiss with rule if i click okay you can see two messages are coming up one is for the handler second one is for the role message so this is fine. Now I want to change the color also for the alert one, not tertiary. Let me pass as success. It should look good also, right? Now I think it's fine or you can just give warning color. I know that is why I'm giving. If you are not sure, you can simply check. Okay, fine. I'm happy with this. Now the third one, actually not the third one. I'm just going to implement the breadcrumbs at the top. So let's implement that before the ion accordion group. Let me have it here. So let's copy it from the documentation and pass it on. Which one should I use? I think this one is better. Let's implement that. Copy it and I'm going to paste it here. In fact, I don't need all of them. All right. I just need two of those. One is the home one where I don't want any href here. You can pass a click event. I think that might work. So in fact, this one also, I don't want any click. Sorry, href. And this one, I'll make it dynamic. Don't need to worry. Let's check it out at first how it looks like. At the top, this is how it is showing right now. In order to differentiate all of those, what can I do? If I give some margin here, I don't think that's gonna look nice. Let's try it once. So if I give a class here, which is a predefined class, ion margin, let's see what happens. So this is showing, I think it's not looking that bad. We can still have this, right? So this is not looking that bad. Let's keep it in this manner. And now at the top, we have the breadcrumbs. So I want to change this value of electronics to the one which I click here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to look for the change event on this particular ion accordion group, which we can check and make it dynamic. So let's try it on and change, see whether any event is getting triggered or not. Accordion change. All right. And dollar event. This is how you need to pass the event dollar event. Okay, then you can just look for the value of it. So accordion chain and event, make it a function in this manner and log the value of this particular event in this way. All right, make it of type any. Now it's fine. Let's check it out whether it works or not. If I click here, you can see an event is getting triggered in which I'm getting the value here. Okay, so this value, I'm going to change it. The one that I want to show here, I'm going to have that. So let me pass the value here as action sheet okay, with a space. Then the second one, I'm going to have alert. All right. And this second one, let me make it dynamic. Let me have a value called breadcrumb value, which I'm going to initialize it in my TypeScript one, after all of this initial value will be an empty one. All right. So now it will look something like this. Whatever I'm going to 
click means whichever accordion I'm going to click, I'll have that value. I'm going to get the value in detail dot value. So this particular value, I'm going to pass it in this dot breadcrumb value will be equals to event dot detail dot value. Okay, let's check it out now what happens. If I click on this action sheet, this action sheet is coming up. If I click on alert, the alert is coming up. So you can make it dynamic also. I, I hope you have understood how exactly we are working with it. Now, if you want to implement the other stuff, say like the collapsing one, then let's implement that. Max item, let's say one, I think it might work. If I give max item to be instead of four, let me pass one. Let's see what happens now. So you can see it is gone. If I click here, it is still showing up. I think one, it should be more than one. So if I pass like three item and if I copy it and paste it here and transform it into an accordion, okay, and make it two. Let's see what happens now. You see, this is showing up. And if I want a click event, then I need to have this particular functionality, not exactly this one, the earlier one where, okay, I just need to change it, right? So let me have the same one only. I'll not exactly pop over. So I'm going to copy this particular one, okay? And paste it here because I just need to change the value. I don't need to look for the popover one. All right. So now this is done and this expand one in the functionality, let's create it in our TypeScript. I'm going to create it here in this manner where what exactly we need to do. Let's check it out in the TypeScript one. So we need to set the value here for the max breadcrumbs. Let's do that. And this should be defined at the very top max breadcrumbs not this dot should be removed and the initial value let me set it to two which i'm going to pass it directly here max what was the name actually i forgot max breadcrumbs copy and paste it here once that is done i have an error let's look at the error here okay fine why the error is given up okay it cannot be set as undefined so I need to make it of type any here. Now the error will go away and let's check it out now what happens. So this is showing up. If I click on it, it will show up the accordion also. And if I click anywhere else, it will show up that particular value. So this is working, right? You have seen how exactly this is working. Now the hover one will not work because we are in the mobile view. If I click on it, the well, the color might change if you make it in that particular manner using the styling one. So let's check it out. You can just give the color or you can work with the custom CSS properties for the breadcrumbs one. If I pass this up, let's see what happens. I'll just copy and paste it in the SCSS here. Paste it. Once that is done, let's check it out how it looks like. So this is showing up. If I click here, okay, nothing is happening. Well, it is not showing up the different colors. If I hover on it, it won't work mostly. So I think I should change to a different color. Then it will look nice mostly. What I'll do is by default, I'll just make the color of it to be dash dash color and I'll pass the primary color VAR within the dash dash iron color. I think dark one will be fine. Black color one. So let's check it now. So the others are black, but this one, the one that I clicked here will be purple. So this is showing that this is the active one. Now hover one will not work here, but if you just do it in a web view, if you hover on it now after refreshing, I think click here. If I just hover on it, well, nothing is not working or what? I don't see any change here, but it should have worked. Let me just try to give a different color here. Yellow color might work. So variable dash dash iron color warning. Let's check it out now. Well, this is not changing. That's strange. It should have been. Let's check it out the HTML. Do we need to do anything? Maybe the href we need to pass. Otherwise, this will not show up. So what am I going to do? Let me pass the href here in each one of those. Okay. And I'll make it as empty. Means it will not redirect anywhere if you click on it. Fine. Let's check it now. Now this is working. All right. All right. So with href, it will work. That's great. So this is what you need to understand now. I'll just simply change this color to the earlier one because yellow color doesn't look that great. I was just checking whether it shows up or not. If I click here, this is showing. That's great. That's great. All right. So this is working with this. We have successfully implemented and tested our breadcrumbs one. So this is the documentation for that. And if I just scroll down, this is how an iron popover can be used. And the example of it, you might have already seen in the iron breadcrumbs when we were implementing that. This is the implementation of an iron popover, how it's going to look like. And the design of it is being given here. 
okay within which you have an ng template and the iron content that's the same way it's being done here this is a, just an example of any content that you are passing in the popover one so here you are just passing the iron content and within that an iron list where you are passing an iron item okay so this is how it's being done if you click on any iron item you can work with that that's the that's not given here only href is being given but you can work with that as per your requirement because we know that in iron item we can pass a click event also all right so what else we can do in an iron popover one let's check it out then we will try to implement that all right so now left click this is coming up right click okay nothing is showing what about the hover one okay in the hover one it is showing up what about the right click okay right now i am not using a mouse so right click is not an option maybe i don't know anyway it's not a problem you can just try it out so this is how it is getting to work with the trigger event and this trigger action is very much important here it is given click and the second one is context menu the third one is the trigger hover so this is how it is differentiating between the other ones okay now is open property same as the one we have seen many a times okay this is opening up on click but is open property is being used instead of the trigger one that is what it is said here so you can implement the same now when to use this it is recommended that you write your popover lines as it streamlines the amount of code in your application so as per your requirement only you can definitely use it up like the way you can use it in your breadcrumbs one there it is a requirement for that similarly somewhere else also if you need you can definitely work on that all right in order to show some list items say like in a iron select you can use a popover one there is an option to pass interface popover and it will show up that particular design you don't need to pass iron popover there as of now so that also can be used now for this styling one in the global.scss you need to pass it placing the custom styles in global.scss is okay fine but you can pass it directly into that particular file page scss where you are using that okay so this is the css properties that you can pass for this particular iron popover one all right now you have seen a lot of things right how exactly you can work with all these things so what is this positioning where you can position it sideways alignment okay let's check it out so side top alignment center this is how it's going to look like side bottom alignment start this is how it's going to look like what about this one left and start and this is right and start so this is how you can align the stuff so this is a proper example of what you need to do on each button click and there are a few other things also say like offset x and y direction so this is auto size and this is size cover so it's going to cover up the button all right so this is looking great what else you can in fact have nested popovers also let's check it out one and within that you have other options like okay this is nested option so as you can see this is another popover that is showing up here for more of and this can be achieved using this particular functionality within the popover you can pass another popover with the same stuff and it's going to work in the similar manner similarly what you can do is for the popover options you can get a lot of things as the properties and you can use it up what else you can use there are certain types also which we have already seen for the size and trigger one also we have seen for the position one so a lot of things you can implement it up okay this is what this is performance mounting inner contents okay let's check it out okay so keep mounting basically it will keep on mounting it will not get disappeared automatically until and unless you click on somewhere else or all right so this is what it means otherwise by default it will go away in certain time period that's what it means by giving this particular property keep mount keep contents mounted to set to true will always show it up all right hope you have understood and you can just check this out in order to understand more about it now there you can just look into the properties also what all it has so i'm not going to like go for that let's try to implement it up okay so which one we should implement i think the multiple one the nested one we should implement it let's try okay the breadcrumbs one definitely you can try it on your own if you want to i don't think we need to work with that if you definitely think that you should go for it then there is no stopping you <laughs> you can simply copy this code and paste it that's going to work for you all right so let me just copy this whole stuff and i'm going to have it into my project where in the html what am i going to do for the third one i'll name it as popover and this one will also be popover and within the content let me simply pass this particular stuff and align everything properly in this manner okay once that is done i don't think we need to do anything else let's try it up so i'll go to the application popover and open it up 
click on the menu and you can see this is showing up right so this is how it is working that's great now let me change the color of this particular iron item where is it we minimize this div and to this iron item i'll give a color of let's say which color should i give let's give success color let's check it out not bad that will that will do or tertiary one can be given let's check this tertiary one this is also not looking bad let me keep this one and let's try to implement popover one for the breadcrumbs also if you think i should show you definitely i'm going to show you right now so what exactly i'm going to do here is for the breadcrumbs one let me have a pop over here and the identifier should be different for both of them so let me just check it confirm it whether i have the same thing or not anywhere no that's fine okay so this particular pop over in which you will see this particular stuff right let me just pass it now within this what do we have so i need to set an is open property here is open which will be set to false initially okay now what we need to do when you click on this particular breadcrumb where which one i think the second one then we should do that basically when it is going to trigger this event then we should activate that and after doing that what is this is last check it out okay this is the one this is his last this is the last one then lines will be none otherwise there will not be any line that's what it means mostly let's check it out but before that we need to do something in our typescript one so we need to have this particular functionality let me copy it get back and in the typescript one when i'm changing the value of this breadcrumb instead of doing it on accordion change this is what we are implementing right no not exactly I need to implement this expand breadcrumbs. So this is the one where I'm setting it up. Let me pass this particular functionality and an event also we need to pass. So, okay, let's pass the event also here. I'm not changing the function name. I pass the event now and this event will be triggering here of type any. Fine. What is given here? This is of type event that is being shown here. You can give the type event also if you want to instead of any. All right. In this manner then we need to pass this particular popover which is going to trigger the hashtag means this particular identifier okay that is why the value is being given as let me just show you so this value is coming from here okay that is how it is triggering it up by which we can access that particular element now this should be of type let me pass any okay now the error is gone what is next thing which we need to implement we need to implement this particular stuff also copy it and paste it here which is of type html iron breadcrumb element fine once that is done the error should go away and instead of e we have to pass event fine all right so this is ready now once it opens up what why do i have an error here anyways let's close it this is not an important file this is just for testing purpose so in our application when i click on this it will open up this particular stuff and when you see all the things and you click on this particular one i don't want to work with the href here so apart from that let me pass another click event here if you click on that particular item which you see then i'm going to set the value so max what is the value here let's check it out this is max breadcrumbs let's copy it and pass it here it will be set to undefined okay let's check it out because i am passing the functionality direct here otherwise you can create a function and do it this is also one of the ways by which we can do it let's check it out whether this works or not so i'll click on it well nothing is showing up here and why is that so because we don't have any collapse breadcrumbs value that is being passed here so what exactly we need to do let's check it out well i think we need to check the value of the event that is getting triggered so if i click on it there is an error here can bind to ng for off since it is not a known property of an item okay i got the problem in the typescript one we need to pass here common module so if you're working with the ng modules you don't need to focus on it but if you're working with the standalone you definitely need to use this up so you need to use common module for ng if ng4 then only it's going to work now if i click on it this is showing up and if i click here okay what happened okay actually href is being given so it is getting redirected there don't worry i just need to remove it and it's going to work as it is let's remove it fine now everything is fine let's try it once again if i click here it is showing up and if you click anywhere else it will go away or you can directly remove it from there also so this is how it is working hope it's clear to you if i click on it again that that's gone now let me click here and click on it again try it that's working okay 
So as I have passed any href, that is why it is just restarting everything again. So this is the recommended one and this is how it's going to work same as the controller one which we have already seen right just the implementation is different now which makes it more native to work with okay but still you can simply use the controller one also you can just look into the difference there is hardly any difference between the two right so you can implement any one of those well this time let's work with the inline one so you can have customization in the spinner in this way you can pass a different message you can set the duration you can change the spinners also all right and for the theming one let's check it out what is being done the color is being changed mostly the background color is changed and the spinner color is changed in fact the normal text color is also changed here in this particular manner and what else we can do these are the options that you can pass spinner message CSS class and whole lot of things which you can just look into it. These are the properties which you can directly apply to the HTML one that you see there. All right, same as the interface one only. So this is pretty easy to work with, I think. Now, these are the events that you can just simply pass. And there are a few methods also, which are same as the event one only that you can work with, okay? And there are certain CSS custom properties also which you can apply for the styling one. So let's implement one of those into our application. I'll go back to the code and this time, let me just have another accordion group. So let me copy this particular stuff here till this particular one and I'll just scroll down and simply paste it here and close this particular tag of div. Along with that, one more tag of accordion. Now all this, accordion stuff will should be placed within the group itself so let's do it let me just push it within the group now okay and i'll change the value to be loading and this one also loading okay in fact the colors also let me just change it to primary secondary i think that will look nice primary then we have next color should be secondary that's how it is defined in the variable.scss let's have the same one only then tertiary after that what color do we have in the variables to CSS primary secondary tertiary then success color so let's pass the success color here instead of this one success color okay let's check it out how it looks like all right this is showing up not bad actually it will work for us so in the iron loading one i need to pass certain values or actually the stuff within the div one let's work on that and in order to pass it up i'll get to the documentation and we'll work with something so let me just try to work with which one let's go for this particular one where we are showing a custom loader all right so let me just copy it up and i'm going to paste it here once that is done let me align it properly in this manner and i'm going to break it down so that we can have some more properties if needed and can look into all of it so now there is a trigger one that is being used and ID is being passed here to this particular button. Now a CSS custom class is being passed. We need to work with that for styling purpose. So in the global.scss, this is being given, but I'm not going to pass it there. In fact, I'm going to pass it in the SCSS here in this particular manner where this colors and everything you can just pass the ones that you are looking for, not exactly the one that is being given here. So I just want to change the color let me just pass the dark color by default also it is dark color but you can just change it as per the requirement and color dark and let's pass all the colors to be dynamic dash sorry where dash dash iron color primary okay let's check it out now so I pass the primary color and dark color for the spinner primary color let's check it out into our application how it looks like so this is how it is looking like and it is looking nice right okay so it is going to disappear after three seconds automatically let's check that so if i click on it again it should disappear automatically i won't click anywhere let's check it out so this is disappearing now this is perfect to work with and in fact this button color also you can simply change the color to be let's say success so that it will be related to this particular one right now this is showing up great for three seconds gone so we are able to implement the loader into our application properly with the inline feature right now there is one more thing which you can just look into it is the 
events okay if you want to trigger some event say like did dismiss you can definitely work with that so i'll just show you one say like did dismiss will be equals to loading dismiss dollar event i'll go to the typescript one and we'll scroll towards the bottom now let me just paste this particular one and this functionality will be ready just now let me pass it as of type event and let me log the value of it what do i get when i dismiss the loader okay so that's what we are going to track here let's check it out now i'll go to the application if i click on this and click on the button now it will be dismissed automatically and the event will get triggered in which you can see there is no data that is being passed otherwise it will come up here and you can work with it so i hope you've understood how to work with this particular stuff also with the events you can work with the other events also that is being shown here. I'm going to show you what's new in iron input, iron text area and in fact on iron select also. So let's get started. Now in the iron input, I have already shown you how to work with that. It's time to look into the changes. Basically, we were supposed to use earlier the iron label and then the iron input in order to pass any iron label and then we used to position that if you haven't checked it earlier don't need to worry i'm going to show you right now so in order to show you that let me copy it up and have it into our code so let me pass it directly here outside of the iron item group then i will remove it just to show you i'm doing that Earlier we used to have iron input and before that we used to pass an iron label tag in this manner where we had an option of passing the position let's say to be let's say floating all right so this is how we used to pass it earlier and let's look at the design of it so this is an iron input where the iron label is not showing up okay if you are not sure what exactly is happening you can pass a placeholder also in order to understand enter just that okay still it is not showing anything because i think we have worked with the iron item here mostly that is why it is not working or what well not exactly we haven't done anything with the iron item so let me just check it again if i give any color to this see if i give a color of primary let's check it out what happens now all right now this is showing up if i enter something it's working but the label is not showing and in order to work with the label one you need to pass legacy one okay because this is changed earlier we used to have a label that's the way i have shown you but now this label is not showing instead of passing this iron label we can simply pass okay what okay okay actually i made a mistake i'm not passing here anything say like i'm just passing any label tag here means any any data i'm passing that is actually a label now let's see whether it shows up or not if i click here okay it is working by default but I'm getting a warning here. Okay. So in order to remove those warning, what is it is saying that instead of passing this thing in iron label, I can directly pass it here using the label property that it has by default, where I can pass this label. Along with that, there is an option of passing label position also, label placement actually. That's gonna be floating in our case. So it's will give you the same exposure now if i click here again you can see this is showing up the same thing only except some margin is different but other than that everything is the same so this is what it is changed in the latest version you don't need to use this iron label anymore it's without that you can directly use it instead you cannot you don't need to actually use the iron item also app without using iron item also you can directly have the iron input with all the features that it was there earlier on if you click on it you can see again it is working in the same manner i've just taken it outside of the iron so this is the basic definition of the changes or this is the so this is the so this is the basic changes which is implemented into the latest iron input as of now in fact the same thing is applied to the iron text area also what else it is being done you can see label is being passed and along with that read only properties disabled it was already there earlier but you can also pass label placement that's the way it is shown here which you can just see and work with it all right just check this out these are the labels floating stacked fixed and the default these are the few options that you have for the label placement okay this is the way it is shown here all right so now what are these clear options let's check it out if you just click on it so these are the clear options where you can click on it and it will get cleared up all right so while editing also it will get cleared say like i'm typing something well, this is not coming up but anyways you can work with the clear input you can set it to true there these are the properties which you can work with you can just look into the documentation the main important change is only in this particular one nowhere else and there is one important thing which is the field inputs now how this field inputs will look like 
this is what it means okay this is the design which is only available for android not for ios but you can change the mode to md for ios also then it's going to appear in this particular design okay that's how you can apply these changes into the ios one also if it is not working as you can see this is unavailable for ios but like i said just pass the mode and it's going to work if you want to see let me just show you by implementing it up i'll copy it get back after the ion accordion let me paste it or should i make an accordion for it that's gonna be better let me undo this okay let's make an accordion so ion accordion all right and within this i'll pass a value of value of let's say input okay and within this I'll have an iron item where I'll pass a slot to be header and the color. What's the next color after success? Let's check it out. We have warning. So let's give a warning color to our HTML one. It's being given. And within that, there will be an iron label here in which I'm going to pass input, comma, text area, comma, select. All right. Then once that is done, we will have a div. So let me define a div. In which the class a predefined class called iron padding is being used and the slot is given as content okay now within this div i'm going to paste it and it needs to be aligned properly let's do that so it is aligned now okay let's check it out so how it looks like in ios mode if i just click on it you can see this is showing but the boxes are not coming up properly now in order to fix that i'll pass here mode to be md okay to both in both the cases mode md so it's going to work for ios also as it is working in the android one so you can see now the boxes are coming up with the same design that we saw there so this is how you can work around with this particular stuff all right rest of the properties will be the same that you can apply on ion input so but yes there are a few more things like the helper and error text which is newly introduced in which you can simply work with this stuff if you need to pass any error text in a form then you can use this error text here let's just check it so i'm going to pass to the last one let me break it down so that you can understand each and everything let's do it let me paste it and needs to be aligned properly now this is aligned right okay now this helper text and error text we need to fix for that i need to change the label let me have email label <coughs> along with that we need to pass here email okay that is what it's being shown here and i need to pass ng model also so basically this is like working with the forms module so it's gonna give me an error i think but don't need to worry i'm going to tell you why i should get an error and the type should be email of course that needs to be passed right now we don't have any type let me pass that now let's check it out what it shows so if i just click on it and click on this particular one i'm getting enter a valid email if i just type something still it is not valid what about g.com it's a valid one or not the error is not getting away what is this coming from helper text so helper text is just a message that is being passed not an error message this is the error message that will come up when you work with the forms module right now we are not having any forms module so let me just try to implement this forms module here i think it might work but let's check the res sorry the example at first if i just type something here and click on somewhere else it should give me the error right which is not coming up in our case so let me just pass or let's try it once again the same stuff if i just type something and click anywhere else it is not coming up in order to f have that value let me pass forms module also it is imported from at angular slash forms now if i try it let's see whether it comes up or not so if i click somewhere else you can see invalid email is showing up this is happening because forms module holds this ng module thing okay that is why we need to pass forms module into the imports one in order to work with this hope it's clear to you so this is how we can work with the iron input one and i'm going to keep it in this particular accordion let's align it properly okay so i hope you have understood how to work with the iron input one with the latest features nothing else okay there is one more input counter in which you can have a counter stuff here for the default one let's say you have 20 characters beyond that it will not allow you to go ahead similarly you can count for the 20 characters remaining so this is how you can do that and this whole stuff is being done using this particular stuff where if you set counter to true then this will work where you just need to pass the max length and this is fine now this in order to achieve this particular stuff you need to work with the counter true max length you need to pass but along with that counter formatter also you need to pass where you need to have a variable here 
which is defined in this particular manner. This is actually a function in which you need to pass the input length and max length, which will be taken automatically from here. And it's going to return the max length minus input length. That's going to be 20 characters. And as long you start typing, it's going to reduce and character simming. So that is how it is being formatted. Hope it's clear. Now, even filtering also you can do. Say like I'm typing something, but it is not having any value here. How about not exactly. So what it will do is it can work as a searching one also. That is what it's being shown here in this particular manner using the iron input one. You can work with it for this filtration also. All right. So if I just try to give a space here, this is not taking a space. Okay. So that is what it's being passed. I think that's what the filter value is all about. Whatever value you're passing, it won't provide you any space or something. Removes non alphanumeric characters. That is what it's been doing. So if you try to pass at the rate also, it will not allow you, I think. Yes, it's not allowing me to have it at the rate also. Okay. And this is how you can modify it. So I hope you're getting it. Now you can simply pass color also. You can just define it. And this area label, well, this is not mandatory. But if you pass it, I think it's a, it's a better option to pass it somewhere. It might be necessary in iron text area or somewhere else, but doesn't have a meaning just for the labeling one it is being done. Nowhere else it is being used here. Now custom one, well, you can simply work with the CSS also in this particular manner, which I'm not going to cover up. And this is how the legacy I was talking about. If you want to use iron label as the earlier one, this is the way it was done earlier. And if you want to use it, in order to use it, you need to pass legacy to be true. Okay. So in order to use the legacy, you simply need to pass legacy property to be true. That's it. That is not shown here, I think. And similarly, you need to work with the text area also. So let me just show you text area. This is the text area where again, you have the label, label placement, filled text area, same thing. Nothing else is changed here. So let me just have this thing also copy and I'm going to paste it here. All right, let's check it out how it looks like. Let me give another BR tag here also. Okay and align this stuff properly. So now this is aligned. Let's check it out how it looks like. Okay, let me open it. This is the text area where I need to pass mode to be MD in order to look at the same design for iOS also. And it will work as it is. There you go. Right. So this is how it is working. And I won't go and explain this text area in depth because it is the same stuff only. Let's go for select one. So in the select or I should iron select. Let me search for it. So this is the iron select in which you can simply pass area label to fruit, but it doesn't make any sense. This is just a normal HTML one that you can pass in HTML. Also, we used to pass area label. Then there is no change as of now. Let's just scroll down a bit. You can simply pass action sheet kind of a stuff or you can pass even the popover one also that will look in this particular manner. All right. But if you work with the popover, I think there is some issue there. Maybe it is resolved. There was some warning for the radio button kind of a stuff. If it happens for you, well, look into that. If it does not show up, then everything is good to go. So, and there is multiple selection also that is available. So you can select more than one items in this particular manner and work with that. So there is no labeling stuff or something available, I think, in the iron select one. So you can simply pass a normal iron label positioning here for the iron select and you're good to go mostly. So there is not much of a change in the select one. So let me just check this out. All right. This is showing up the whole value. So this is the only thing. And if you find some warnings, then you simply pass area label in iron select everywhere. All right. Okay. There is a label placement stuff also that is being given for the iron select two. Okay. Label is also there. All right. All right. So label and label placement is being given for iron select also. I thought it was not given, but it is given. So in this manner, you can work with the label label placement for the iron select also. That's great. And justification. What is it? Okay, where you need to place your stuff. So and select justify. If you give start, it will show up at the start. If you give it at the end, it will show up here. And if you don't give or you give space between, then it will show up in this particular manner. By default, it's going to implement the space between one, I think. Okay, so this is how you can work with the justify one. Fill selects. Well, the same stuff only. You can work with it. All right. If you want to implement it up, let's copy it and place it here. Let me just remove the extra spaces. And after this, I'm going to paste it. Fine. Make the mode to be MD for both the cases. All right. Once that is done, let's check it out. 
whether it shows up or not so you can see this is showing up let's give a br after this all right once that is done you will see some spaces and it is working nice okay if you want to work with popover let's try it out i'll give an interface here interface p o p o v e r popover let's check it out how it shows so this is the one for the popover and you can see some warnings are coming up here okay so in order to get rid of the warnings well i don't know what to do iron radio now requires providing a label with either the default slot or the area label attribute so maybe area label is needed here let me pass it area label any label let me just pass it let's say solid okay now let's try it out so if i just click on it well you can see still the warnings are coming up for the iron radio see radio button is being used here but it's in the iron select options i cannot do anything regarding that and i cannot pass i think area label to the iron select one mostly okay i don't think so if i just copy and paste let's check it out quickly whether it works or not i don't think it's going to work let's try it so if i just click on it you can see still the errors are coming but not errors the warnings are coming but with this warning also you can simply go ahead and work with it this is the way an example is being shown but since we are not implementing that so i cannot do anything regarding that right the only option is i think you can change the mode to md here that might solve the problem maybe i've changed the mode everywhere let's try it now so if i click here once again still the errors are coming up so this is not working here as expected not to worry these are just warnings you can simply skip that and go ahead with it. all right so i hope you have understood how to work with the iron select iron input and iron text area properly So how exactly we can implement this up? Let's check it out. This is an example of it and it works simply as a model controller that we have already seen or if you haven't seen that earlier in my course, don't need to worry. You are going to look into that in the coming section. All right. So how exactly we can implement this up in the HTML? This is the way it can be implemented. This is what an iron model will look like where you need to pass ng template within that you can pass in header also if you want to but definitely the iron content is must to be passed okay and you can pass a component also if you want don't worry you will get to learn all this within this course only so at the very end part of this course i have explained how to work with the inline model one but in this particular video i'm just going to give you an overview of how to work with this so as you have already seen this is the iron model and this is using the trigger event okay where on click of this particular button it will show up and on dismiss what will happen this function will get called on will dismiss and it's going to set up the message which is going to be shown in this particular p tag let's check it out so if i click here and if i hit the cancel button nothing is shown if i hit the confirm button hello is being shown here okay so it's getting changed on clicking the confirmation one that is what it's being done mostly somewhere or the other this is the default message and if it is hello sorry if it is confirmed then it is changed to hello along with the data if you're passing something so that is what it's being done here now you can work with ease open also like the earlier inline ones that i have shown same way only and what else you can do here well you can work with the controller model also and this is how you can work with it basically you don't need to pass it here in the typescript directly you can pass this particular open model functionality in which you are doing the same functionality only and you are using a component here where you are passing this particular html okay so that is what it's being done and rest will remain the same okay so now preventing a model from dismissing how you can do that by passing the can dismiss property and this can be done in the html itself where in this particular one you can pass can dismiss and you can play around with the variable here called can dismiss which is set to false initially you can turn it to true if some conditions are being applied so that's why it comes into very handy so if i just close this you can see this is not getting closed right so this just look at that i just check this up then only it's going to get close otherwise it's not going to get close that is what the condition is being given here okay if you just check the functionality on terms changed then i am setting the value of can dismiss to be the one that is getting passed from there okay if it is checked then it will turn to true if it is unchecked then it will turn to false 
hope it's clear to you how it's being done now setting a callback function what is that say if i am closing this and an action sheet model is coming up how that is being done well basically in the iron model if you are clicking on the model dismiss then it's going to get dismissed but what exactly happened is i clicked on it and it is asking me whether you're sure or not. so this can be achieved by passing this presenting element and this presenting element what it does is it's going to look for the okay query selector and when you're working with the can dismiss functionality it is using the action sheet controller here okay this you need to inject it in the constructor in order to use it and import it once that is done you can simply use the action sheet stuff here in order to show that prompt okay that is what it's being done here. So this is how you can play around with this stuff or like within a model you are using an action sheet controller also. So this is what you can play around. That is why controllers are also very handy along with the inline one. All right, so now prevent swipe to close. So if I click on it and if I try to swipe it in iOS, it is being done. It is not getting closed. Okay, this can be done. How it, this can be done? By passing, can dismiss is being passed and presenting element is being passed, but it is being checked here that can dismiss function can only work okay if gesture is not the role means role not equals to gesture then only it's going to work and it is strictly checking because double equal is being given here that is mean that means it is strictly checking double equal after the exclamation so hope it's clear now what are the types of model that we can implement one is the card model so in the card model well it appears in this particular way and this is unavailable for android one okay then what is the next type of model and you can just look into this stuff i'm not going to get into details of it because we are going to cover up later in this particular course now there is a sheet model also that is also called bottom sheet model in which you can simply click on it and it's going to appear in this particular manner even you can just move it towards the top by using the breakpoints one so if i will show you this is the initial breakpoint and these are the breakpoints array you can only pass the initial breakpoint to have the value within this array only that is why it was introduced at the bottom part initially and i just swiped it to move to the top and it is taking the value of maximum of 0.75 only you cannot go beyond that that is why it is not able to scroll towards the top anymore you can have a maximum value of one all right so this is how it's being done here find what is the next thing then interacting with background content okay so what is it all about if i just click here so in this particular one there is something available here which i can not execute once this is coming up so what is it about i just don't understand well i don't know by interacting with this okay that means it is still showing it up okay and this is working so you can just work around with the background content also along with the data that is coming up for the iron model and this can be done how this can be done by setting is open property to be true initially so you don't need to look for any variable to use this stuff and you can work it on the background whatever stuff you have whatever is visible you can work around with that all right so auto height sheet what is it okay auto height it is taking the automatic the height of something where initial breakpoint is one and you have breakpoints zero and one okay but if you initial breakpoint is one it should take the full value right but it is not taking that because we are just passing a div not the ion content here if we pass pass ion content full screen to be true then it will take the full screen i think that is why it is not showing up handle behavior what is it to the next breakpoint if i just swipe it it will take you to the next breakpoint again if i just leave it towards the top it will take you to the next breakpoint what about the next one there is no other breakpoint i think no there is no other breakpoint we had a maximum of 0.75 as the breakpoint now how you can style this up using this particular iron model stack model can be passed basically what happens is you have a an option to pass styling also and by passing the css class here or you can directly work with the iron model to pass to each and every iron model but i don't want to do that so you can simply pass a class here and work with that for the iron model one okay so that's how you can style it up for the animation well if i just click on it so this is showing up in nice animation here and this is working with the help of enter animation and leave animation so animation is being given from this enter animation one all right and leave animation so this is how the animation is being given which is looking lovely you can implement this up now custom dialogue so this is another thing where you don't get a normal model kind of stuff but it is actually related to the alert one okay but this is looking lovely 
and you can work with it how using this particular iron model stuff where you need to do certain styling here in which this is the most important part where you are passing mean mean weight and a height also border radius and box shadow is just a temporary thing but you are just setting the size of it in such a manner that it will show up in this particular manner you can just check this out and try it out okay now the model options what options you can pass in an iron model these are the things that you can simply pass it in an iron model and apart from that what else you can do well there is nothing much mounting inner contents so if you just have this stuff okay it's the same thing only the content of an inline iron model is is unmounted when close okay fine not a problem that's what we get and you can use the keep contents mounted so if you have this particular stuff it will mount at the top automatically means by default it will be in this particular status okay you don't need to open the model it will be opened up automatically that's what i think it means so these are the properties that you can have and along with that these are the events that you can get triggered functions are this particular one that you can use using the query selector and sorry not the query selector the view child stuff so and these are the custom properties that you have seen how it is being used and some lots if any so basic overview i have given now let's try to implement one of those i'm going to implement the one with a custom animation one so i think i'm going to implement this particular stuff so what am i going to do let's get to the html part and copy it up so what am i going to copy basically i'm going to copy button and this iron model that's it let me just scroll down and i'm going to select from the bottom because it is too big so let me select up till here once that is copied i'll get back create another accordion or let me create a div at first in this div what am i going to pass let me just minimize this particular one all right so within this div there will be a class called iron padding and a slot of content all right and within this i'm going to paste everything now once that is being done let's align everything properly at first once that is aligned i'm going to cut this div or let me keep it in this manner now i'm going to copy this accordion here okay once that is copied i'm going to paste it here and change the value to model this one will be model color i'm going to change but don't need to worry let's fix everything up at first let me remove everything from the div one i don't need this div in fact i need this particular div so let me move it towards the top in this manner and we are good to go now we have certain errors here let's fix that in order to fix that i need to go to the typescript and pass those animations which is available here in the typescript one so in order to implement that we need to at first inject the animation controller into our constructor let's do that quickly i'll go to the constructor and paste it import this animation from at angular slash core once that is done it is imported here after that i need to pass this two properties so simply copy it to the bottom okay these two are copied now and i'm going to paste it after this breadcrumb in this manner okay once that is done let's check it out i think i need to pass it at the bottom not directly at the top so i'm going to minimize it and move it towards the bottom okay let's check it now i'm getting an error for the root one let's check it out how it is solved here well it is not solved let me pass of type any here i think that will solve the problem yes it is solved now great let's check it out whether it works or not so i'll get back and go to this particular one go to iron model click on this and it is showing up in the same manner right if i hit close it is close so this is how it is working you have seen how to work with the model also now let me just change the design a bit so in the variable.scss after success we have the warning one so warning is not yet implemented or what yes it is implemented well after warning we have danger so let's implement the danger one for doing that i'm going to change the color to danger here for the model one let's check it now great in fact this color also can be changed to danger one let's do that here color to be danger now this will look similar let's check it out yes that's great so in fact the designing is also looking nice now so in this one we are going to implement this inline and there is a controller option also by which we can implement the toast controller so how it looks like if i click on it you can see at the bottom this toast will disappear after five seconds okay so it is going to disappear and it is just like a stack bar okay now how to implement this inline toast basically this is the tag by which you can implement this up where a duration is being given 
This is a message which you can pass and this is a trigger one and an ID is being given to this particular P tag. Okay, this ID is for message but this button is having open to. Okay, so based on the button click only it is working and you can work with the is open also in, instead of the trigger one and it's going to give you the same result here. Okay, it's going to disappear in five seconds. So it is quite simple. This is the your code where you're just implementing this toast message with a button and in the TypeScript one, you can just use this functionality to open that particular toast message. Fine. Using the controller, how you can work with, don't need to worry. I'm going to explain the controller one in this particular course when we enter the food delivery application. So you can present the toast at the top, at the middle and at the bottom. Okay wherever you want just by passing this particular present toast functionality in which you go to the TypeScript and this is how the toast controller is being used it is injected here and you can pass the position which will be passed in this particular one and that's how you look into that you can pass the duration also message also whatever properties you could pass in the HTML one you can pass it here also. okay and if you're not sure you can simply check the properties one here you will understand each and everything what all things you can work with now for dismissing you can simply use the dismiss function after the creation okay don't need to worry it's already shown in the course once again i'm telling you if you are feeling confused your confusion will go away now this is another thing where you have two buttons here okay now in order to implement these buttons it is similar to the alert one where you can simply pass the buttons here and an event called did dismiss is being passed where you are just setting the role message role and handler message will show up here now this particular stuff will hold toast buttons in which it has one called more info and the other one is the dismiss one and this toast message will dismiss in three seconds. That is what is being given. If you don't want it to get dismissed, simply remove this duration from here. That's it. It won't get dismissed automatically. That's what you need to remember. It is a trigger one. And after passing these buttons here, two buttons are being passed and in which this dot handler message is being changed when you click on that particular button and the role is being said when this particular toast is getting dismissed. So if you just want to check it, if I click here and click on more info, you can see this is changed and this role is also changed. Okay, this is how it is working. Now let's look into this particular one where it will show up a toast message with long text. Okay. And this one, this is open baseline layout toast and this is open stack layout toast. What is the difference between the two? Let's check it out. So in both of them, there is no difference in the HTML one, right? Except a layout is being passed as tag. And by default, I think it is what baseline. Okay, so this is by default and this is what you can simply pass by passing a layout called tag. Hope you have understood, right? After that, you can also pass icons. How you can pass it up? it's going to look like this. You can pass this icon. Let's check it out in this particular manner. You simply need to pass the icon property where you can pass an icon from the iron icons one. Ionicons.com. You can just get there and get an icon whichever you want to pass here. Along with that, you can also style it up passing the theming one where you can look at this. This is italics and there is a border which is being provided here. Let's check it out how this is being done. So in the HTML, it is quite normal just a class is given here okay then this particular class is being used here for setting up the iron toast in which a box shadow is being given color is being given to the text and a background is also changed to the light color one which you can see here okay after that it is passing font style to italic to the shadow parts of this particular one. What is shadow parts? Basically those parts of this particular iron toast which you cannot access directly. This is the shadow part okay means this is hidden you cannot directly use it so in order to use those you can simply use colon colon part and pass the property there so there is an id here that is available on the message one where it is not exactly okay you just need to access the message that is what so by default there is a class called message mostly here that is why it is able to access that up and if you want to access work with the button one this particular one you can have a border left because this is also shadow part and the color is also changed and the font size is also changed okay now if you want to learn more about the shadow part let me just click here this css shadow part and you will get to learn that this is there you can apply bottom button container header icon and message okay what does it mean? It is already written here. You can simply check that out. So theming, let's implement this into our application. So I'm going to simply copy it, get back to our application, create one. 
So let me just create one accordion at first. Let's copy it, get to the bottom or I can minimize this particular stuff. Get towards the bottom after this. Okay. And paste it. Once that is done, I'm going to change the value to toes. This one will be toes. The color will be after warning. What is the color? Sorry, after danger, it is dark. Let's pass a dark color here to the HTML one. Done. And this is going to be show. No, exactly. I'm going to change everything. So copy it and simply paste instead of this particular stuff. Okay. Once that is done, you can work around with the button here and i'm going to get that in the typescript one which is going to be this particular one let's copy it and get back paste it here you can have multiple buttons also if you want to work with that let me pass it here okay once that is done in the styling i'm going to work with this particular stuff copy it and pass it in the scss here okay let me paste it so this iron toast will show that this particular class you need to access only within the iron toast nowhere else hope it's clear to you now the functionality is ready let's check it out whether it works or not so if i click here you can see toast is coming up and there is an open toast button which is showing up the same styling that we have seen there okay and if you want to change the color of it i think we have an option of changing the color also for the toes so if i pass a color here let's say primary whether it will work or not let's check it out so if i click here once again you can see the color is changed to the primary one so this is how you can change the color of the iron toes okay now let's check it for the other options these are the options which you can pass within a toast button okay and these are the toast options which you can pass directly into the toast one i have passed the color one right now it is also working and similarly well there are a few other stuff which you can look into in the property section and work with that css class duration animation also you can simply pass it here also whole lot of stuff is available layout you have already seen how to work with that stacked and baseline by default it is baseline then message you can pass you can work with the buttons one you have already seen that whole lot of stuff is there and these are the events that gets triggered you can work with that also i have shown you how to work with the events earlier that is why i'm not showing it again it's the same stuff on everywhere in all the controllers these are the shadow parts which i have explained you css shadow parts and these are the custom css properties that you can work with so it's pretty easy to work with all these things if you go to through the official documentation of i have shown you the overview of the iron toast also and i hope you have understood how to work with this particular stuff We are going to understand few of the things which I feel you might have not understood properly in this particular section. So let's get started. At first, I am going to show you in the text area, there is a feature called auto grow. What does it do? Basically, it's going to auto grow and shrink the text area based on its content. So you simply need to pass auto grow and set it to true and you're good to go. All right. And this is an example of it. Say if I remove it. It's going to become string. And if I just type something in this particular manner, you can see it is growing, right? How about now? Yes, this is growing. Okay. So this is how you can work with this particular stuff. This is related to text area, iron text area. All right. The second thing which I want to explain you is within our code, which is related to the placement one, label placement. So let me just search for label dash placement. Because I saw that we are also using label displacement instead of the label placement that we have used in most of the cases. Let me just show you. This is the one in a text area and in the input one also we have seen that we work in that particular manner only. Why this is given in this particular manner? Let's check it out in ion input. So I'm going to search for ion input now which is exactly here okay so this is ion input let's look at label placement which is given as this particular one so i just simply need to search for the outline one where is it i think this is the one filled inputs and within the filled inputs the placement is given in this particular manner what if i change it instead of writing it in this particular manner if i just type it in this way will it make any change in the solid one in the ion input let's check it out so i'll go to the output here and open up the input one where this is a solid one and it is showing the same feature i think there is hardly any change let me just undo this up and see whether there is any change here or not so if i just click on it again it is showing the same feature so i think we can pass both ways but i think this is a better way to pass because everywhere we are passing in the similar manner right so if i turn all of them in fact in this iron select also 
label displacement is being passed. What if I pass label displacement everywhere? Will it work? So I'll just keep it in this manner. And now I'm going to change the text area. Let me pass this particular label and displacement. Let's see whether it works or not. So I'll open it up and this is a text area where I'm going to click on it and it is working. So I think both ways you can pass it, but still I would prefer this particular one instead of passing it the dash one. Maybe you can try the alternate way, but I feel this is what it is defined in most of the cases. So it might change at a later course of time. So I would prefer this particular one instead of using anything else. Okay, rest is completely up to you. So let me just change everywhere. Let me copy it and I'm going to place it here. Replace it with label placement. Okay, in three places, I'm going to replace everywhere. Now let's check it out whether there is any change or not. I'll just hit refresh once again. And this time let's check it out. So everywhere it is showing the same behavior. No change at all. How about the okay, this is working. In fact, this is also working. That's great. Nowhere there is any problem. So I hope you have understood this part and the warnings are coming only for this particular select one, which is the popover one. So if I just reload it, it's it will go away. Hope you have understood this thing. Okay. And now I want to talk about the legacy one. So I think I told that you have to pass legacy to be true in order to use that in ion input. Maybe let's check it out using the legacy syntax in order to use that. I think I have already shown you how to use the legacy one. Let me click on it again. So using the legacy one, you don't need to pass anything. Okay. It is written here. Developers can set the legacy property on ion input to true to force that instance of the input to use legacy syntax. And it, it will not give any warning maybe because of that they have told this, but I don't think it is given here any option to pass that particular property of legacy. It was there earlier. Maybe it is removed. I'm not sure. Okay. There is a property. Okay, fine. I was correct actually. <laughs> so you can just pass uh, legacy to be true and error will go away if you're using ion label instead of passing the label here directly in the ion input ion text area everywhere okay if you do not know about all these things simply use it i have already explained both the ways okay now and the legacy if you need to pass here you simply can have the earlier design and pass legacy legacy here set it to true okay but not on this design this is the latest one moving ahead to the next one i wanted to explain you in the css that we have used most of the time this particular stuff this is the class name right you know how to pass a class without this also it's going to work okay if i just remove it you won't find any issue with the toast one now Let's see, you see, it's the same toast message, but what is the benefit of using this particular tag here? It will show that this particular class will only work for the iron toast tag, not anywhere else. Means I'm using an iron toast here, right? So whenever you're using this particular stuff, like we are using iron toast here, or you can do one more thing. Let me just show you a few of the examples. So in order to explain you this particular stuff, what am I going to do now? Well, let me play with something. So I want to change. Let's say I'm into the iron model. So let's say change something within our iron model only. So what do we have in common? Say like the P tag. I think we are using P tag in many places. So for the P tag, I'll give a class here. Let me pass a class called P style. Okay, and let's use that. So here I'm going to give P style within which the color is going to be, let's say variable dash dash ion color primary. Okay, that's gonna be the color of the P style. Let's check it out. So I'll open up the model here and the P style for the sales rep color has changed, right? Now, if I want the P style to be changed means to be applied in all places where I'm using the P tag, then I need to pass the classes everywhere where I'm using it up. So let me just search for the P tag where all it is available apart from the model one. So let me just pass P as a tag in this particular manner. So it's available in six places. It is also available in the alert one. So let me just pass the same class of P style for the alert one also. Okay, so that should be applied here also, right? Let's check it out. For the alert one, if I just click here and hit OK, you can see it is applied here too. Now, if I want to just restrict this particular class, okay, you can just work with the tags also. I know that if you remove this class from here, it's going to be safe for you. But suppose you're using something of that kind of a stuff where you're using the same class name and it is applied there and you want to restrict at that certain point of time, then you can simply pass here that this p tag 
within the iron model only that will be changed okay now you just check it out what happens if i just go to the model one it is still the same right well not exactly it is changed so what exactly i need to do here directly i cannot pass it because this class is not within the iron model basically what i am saying is you can apply that stuff only if that class belongs to the iron model one let me just show you if i pass a class here okay this particular class and if i pass model class here only to this particular one i can pass here in this manner not the p style one because p style is within the iron model not on the iron model so you can simply pass model class here and you can pass some styling to that but if you want to work with the p style definitely you can pass it here within the iron model in this manner okay and pass this particular stuff there then it will only change means this class will only work for the iron model not for the alert one so if i click here hit okay this is not applied here but on the iron model this will be applied so this is just a vague example that i have shown you not the perfect example actually if you want to execute something in the iron model definitely you can try this up so for that I have to go to the iron model and this is the CSS custom properties that you can work with. So let's check out few of the stuff say like the border style border width height max height you can change all of it actually so let's work with the width one whether it gets changed or not i'm not sure let's check it out so i'll just change the width here to be 90 percent okay let's check it out whether it is getting applied or not so i need to check it here and in the model one you can see 90 percent is applied so it is working all right this is how it is applied only to this particular iron model nowhere else say like if i pass this particular class called model class anywhere else let's say let me copy this class and meanwhile i'm going to remove this p style one from everywhere in this manner where all i have applied let's check it out in this particular one also i'm going to remove it and that model class let's apply it to the popover one also or anywhere else should i apply let's check it out what all things do we have let's apply it here i think in the input one or to the div one so in the div there is already a class so i need to pass in this particular manner model class let's see what happens if i remove iron model now okay if there is dash dash with property available then only it's going to work in the loading one we pass it in the loading right let me just confirm again no actually in the input one so this particular one there is no change because there is no dash dash width thing available but if i just pass here directly the width then it's going to get changed okay let's check it out now definitely there will be a change you can see it is reduced right and similarly if you just check the model one also at the bottom you will see the same stuff it is reduced okay and it is more reduced because i have passed direct width also so both of them are impacted here but if i just pass here iron model so it will negate the use of this particular class on the input text means on the uh, where you have input text area and select one you will just see right now there is no impact here but if you just go to the iron model this will have the same impact even if you remove this particular width from here so i hope you have understood why exactly we are using this particular tag here this is very handy and you need to understand this particular stuff in order to use it in future projects all right so let me just remove all of it and i hope you have understood how to use it up all right so i've removed from here along with that i'm going to remove this particular class also because we don't need to work with that right now so with this we have come to the end of this particular section i hope you enjoyed this particular section thank you so much for watching